Hello everyone and welcome back to Amity Bloom. Today's video is all about a secret treasure of mine, piano paper rolls. What they are and my favorite ways to use them. This is a piano paper roll. The piano roll was introduced in 1896 in the USA and it's a continuous roll of paper with perforations or holes punched into it. The perforations represent note control data that moves over a reading system known as a tracker bar and the playing cycle for each musical note is triggered when a perforation crosses the bar and is read. Piano rolls are easy to pull because of their triangular shaped edge. All piano paper rolls are shaped like a spool and they have metal pins at the very top and bottom that can be removed. Each piano paper roll has a different set of markings and phrases that are special and unique to that one particular piano paper roll. They all come in a box such as this one. They usually measure 12 to 13 inches long. The great thing about the piano roll is that they each come with a sticker that lets you know the composer or the song that the piano paper roll can play. All the labels are different, but it's the clearest indication as to what type of piano paper roll that you have. When you open up the box, this is what it looks like. It's very similar to wallpaper in the shape. When you take it out, be very gentle, and you'll notice that the box can actually be used for something else. It's the perfect size for washi tape. I love using some of my sturdy piano paper roll boxes to store some of my beautiful and favorite washi tape. It stores them perfectly and securely, and it's a great way to recycle and reuse the packaging that comes with these beautiful and antique heirlooms. They are nice and sturdy for creating a spine or a cover to a journal. This is an example of a used in a new piano paper roll. You get so much paper to play with in one roll. This is an example of two different types of rolls that you can possibly get when you order piano paper. The one on the left has seen better days and is very used and worn up. I personally love these rolls because they have character. You can even see the chips at the very top. Or if you do not have the budget to spend on piano paper roll, you can simply buy masking paper at your local hardware store or local craft store. It has the same consistency as piano paper, however it is slightly more sheen and glossy than the typical piano paper. You'll see the color differences between both. The masking paper is slightly darker than the piano paper and it's not as matte. But it can be used as an alternative if you cannot find piano paper or it's out of your budget. Nevertheless, they both have a similar paper consistency and would be great in projects. The first way and the easiest way that I like to use my piano paper rolls is as journal pages in my books and in my journals. I have kept one of my mini journals to show you as an example. A single page of piano paper usually curls around the inserts. I have also used masking tape to reinforce the fold so it doesn't break. You want to start out by unrolling your piano paper. My biggest recommendation is to use a paperweight or something that's heavy to prevent the paper from rolling back to you when you're cutting it with your scissors, as this can be very annoying. Sometimes your paper will rip because of the perforations that are on the piano paper roll. All you must do is cut them off and save the scraps for a project to use later on. It's not a big deal. When you have the paper that you want to use for your journal, fold it in half very carefully and press firmly to create the fold. You then want to take your scissors and carefully cut across the fold, making sure not to tear or rip the edges of your paper. You want to take one side of your paper, and this is going to be the paper that's going to be going into your insert, folding it again in half, laying flat down on your table and using paper weights to secure it in place. You then want to take some masking tape or any tape of your choice and place it right along the crease in the fold. 
This is so that it reinforces the spine of the paper, which will prevent it from breaking when you're going to do the binding to your journal. Now you want to fold it again and cut off the excess around the corners and the sides to make sure that your paper is straight and even on all sides. This is when I like to use my paper trimmer as it makes the job a lot easier. This is what your paper should look like and how you're going to be placing it inside of your journal. Don't worry if there's little tears or markings, that adds character. The second technique that I like to use with my piano paper is to create a backing. There are two different types of backing that I like to do. I like taking a tea stained piece of copy paper, so lightweight paper, taking some Mod Podge or adhesive of your choice and spreading it throughout the entire surface of your paper. You then want to take your piano paper and carefully lay it right on top. While you're doing this, you want to make sure you do not tear your pages and you go slowly because this is when the perforations can rip or tear. And very carefully you want to use your hand to make sure that there's no air bubbles. Make sure you don't pull on the paper because it can tear. And you can even use a bone folder to make sure that there's no extra bubbles. And now I'm just taking my scissors and cutting off the excess since this is going to be a page in our journal. You don't want any of the excess paper showing through. Once you have cut around it, you want to take your paper and fold it in the middle just like you would with any other paper to form your insert. I love this way of using the piano paper as paper in your journal because it adds structure and it looks really beautiful on the back with the tea stained page and you can even sew it as well. For the next type of method, this is the same method using any type of adhesive on the back of cardstock, so not tea stained paper, but cardstock, a heavier paper. You then want to take the piano roll and just like what we did previously, very carefully, just place it right on top of the glue and take a flat edge to make sure that there's no air bubbles because those are annoying, especially when you're going to go in to write and to journal. Take your scissors and repeat the same process of cutting off the excess paper and then you fold it in half to make your insert. And this would be lovely as a cover for a journal because it adds structure and when you go in to sew the sides, it gives it a beautiful vintage look and it looks so pretty. This is my favorite way to use it for journals if you're wanting to make a cover. And this is the examples of the piano paper roll backed with tea stain paper, cardstock, and on its own. So moving on to the next one is how I use piano paper roll to cover a traveler's notebook insert that's already made. So this insert I purchased from Amazon. It's a simple traveler's notebook off-brand insert. And what I'm going to do is cover the craft cardstock on the front. So same process, taking Mod Podge, taking my piano paper, treating it exactly as paper, it's nothing new, and very carefully making sure that it's flat and that it's stuck on there on all sides. Since this is going to be a cover of your insert, you don't want the sides lifting up or tearing. So you wanna be very careful. You then wanna turn it over and begin trimming around the sides, taking away the excess piano paper. And then what I like to do to give it a more rustic look or edge is I fold it and then I tear it off. Because it's very thin paper, it's so easy to tear, as you all have seen. But now I am tearing it on purpose because I'm going for more of a rustic and organic edge. And with this side, I decided to tear it a little bit more just so that I have some of the brown craft paper peeking through. And now I'm taking some masking tape and placing it along the middle so that when you close your insert or fold it in half, it doesn't break, which is something that tends to happen if you don't reinforce the spine of your insert. And then a close-up of it is what I love, seeing all the script and the little markings. So the next thing that I wanna show you is probably the easiest to do as journaling tags and cards. So you just wanna take a scrap piece of cardstock Spray your favorite type of adhesive. This time I'm using a spray-on adhesive just to show variety. Placing your piano paper roll and trimming the excess. What I like to do is round the corners just to make it look like a traditional journal card. And as you can see, part of it ripped on the side, but I loved it. I think those little markings and characteristics make it really cute. 
Then here is a tag silhouette that I already had cut out from cardstock. And this time I'm taking a glue stick just to show you that any type of adhesive will work perfectly fine with the piano paper. There's not one that would work better. So now just laying the piano paper right on top, the same thing, you'll notice the pattern and all of these um, different ways that I like to use it. It's very simple to do. Just glue, place, and cut the excess. And then you can transform it later on by sewing or decorating it with different types of embellishments that would enhance the piano paper even more. So moving on to floating pockets. This is also one of my favorites. And the first method is quite simple. Use your paperweights and cut off some piano paper. Then fold it in half. Make sure that you don't tear the edge and use a paperweight just so that part of your paper isn't rolling back to you. And you want to cut a small floating pocket with your scissors and then take your paper trimmer to make sure that all of the edges are nice and straight. If you don't mind having straight edges, then that step can completely be dismissed. And this is an example of what the floating pocket should look like, especially after you have sewn on the edges. I love the look of these floating pockets because it's simple, yet there's so many ways that you can decorate the front, the back, or even with what you're going to be filling them up with in the middle. And with the script, it just is the icing on top. The next method is a slightly more difficult. There's more steps included. Same process, take something heavy so that your paper won't roll back and fold it right in the middle. Open it back up again and you want to put some Mod Podge with a brush only on the upper top portion of your piano paper. This is going to give structure to the back of our floating pocket. You want to make sure you take a flat surface or a flat edge. I like to use a bone folder just to make sure all of the air bubbles are out of the paper. Then you want to take the lower portion and fold it, not reaching to the very top, because remember this is going to be kind of like a waterfall pocket. You want it to be about three quarters of the way to the top. Then you want to take your waterfall floating pocket, and I like to trim off a little bit. I don't want to have it to be too wide. Take your scissors and on the other side, of the edge of the pocket you want to cut it. This is the part when it can get a little bit confusing but if you follow exactly what I do on the video it will work perfectly. If your paper tends to rip just use some masking tape and it fixes it right up kind of like a little band-aid. Then I'm taking some Mod Podge and I'm going to fold the lower portion over to give it structure and make it nice and thick so that it can be strong enough to form into a pocket. We're going to be repeating the same step on the upper part that we have folded, and I don't like to fold it until the bottom since we do want the first pocket to be peeking a little bit behind the pocket that we are just now folding. And this is how you create that waterfall pocket effect. That's the back, this is the first pocket that was folded on the top, and this is the third pocket that was folded on the bottom. And this is how you create your floating waterfall pocket. And then these are three examples of three different types and three different sizes. And then what you do to create the pocket is you take the edges and you pass it through your sewing machine. You don't have to worry about the piano paper being too fragile since we did back it up and we created layers by gluing the Mod Podge and then folding the paper over. That gives thickness to the paper which prevents it from tearing or breaking when passing it through the sewing machine. And as you can see, you just sew along the edges and that makes perfect text spots for tags and for journaling cards. This is one of my favorite ways of using piano paper in journals and even as happy mail. Moving on to the last and final project, the envelope booklet. This is by far my favorite and it's also the most complicated. You want to start out just like what we have been doing, cutting off some piano paper roll using paperweights, but this time use an envelope as your guide to fold the sides of your piano paper over. It doesn't have to be perfect as we can always trim off the excess later on to have even sides. But you see that I'm using the best of the materials on my desk to use them as paperweights, taking the lower portion and folding it just like we were to make a simple envelope. And you want to repeat the same process with the paper on the very top. 
by placing your paperweights and just transferring them to the side that you're not working on. Taking the top portion and folding it to the edge of the envelope that's being used as our guide and template. This is a lot easier if you do have an envelope, but if you do not have one on hand, you can just eyeball it. Now you want to take some scissors and cut along the crease that you have folded on the top and on the bottom. This is because we're going to be creating a slightly different booklet than normal. So you want to make sure those edges are not connected at all because we're going to be closing them up in different ways. So now that you have cut along all of the creases, you end up with something like this. You then want to work on the lower portion, so the flaps on the lower portion of your envelope, and you want to add some Mod Podge right on top of them. It doesn't matter if they're not the same size because we will be taking care of that later on when we're finishing up the booklet. You then want to fold it over on the back side of your paper. This will give it more structure and more thickness, which makes it a lot more durable. You fold it over one more time, and then the edges, you want to fold them back because this will prevent the edges of your envelope from tearing. Just like what we have been doing with piano paper, if you want to add strength and thickness and durability, you want to glue and fold, glue and fold, and that will give you the thickness of cardstock. I like to add some masking tape over the top just to give it a finished look, but you don't have to do that, of course. So now that I have the silhouette of my envelope, I can get rid of it, put it aside, and I'm going to take my Mod Podge and begin doing the same thing to the outer flaps in the middle of my envelope. And all I'm going to do is put the Mod Podge and then take another piece of piano paper, lay it right on top, and cut the excess. The reason I'm not folding them inward and gluing them onto the middle part of my envelope is because they're going to be part of an open pocket that will be exposed. So I will show you what to do later on with your outer flaps, but for now you just want to make them a little bit more sturdy by layering on the piano paper. Now we're going to be working on the top portion, and with these you do want to fold them inward. This is going to be part of our base to our booklet, so it's very important that you layer the piano paper on top of each other because it gives you a nice space to work on. And when you're creating a booklet, you want to make sure that the opening parts of your booklet are nice and strong to hold up any pockets or anything that you might want to add. So now I'm just going to take my scissors and trim off the excess of the piano paper that we layered on top of the flaps and you just want to follow the guideline of the envelope and then I'm just trimming the inside portion so that it looks semi even then this is the fun part I get to trim off the edges and I'm just recycling that same edge so that I get the exact same size on all sides of the envelope flaps and I really like the whole aesthetic of a tag and if you notice, I actually took inspiration from the overall shape of a tag, of the upper portion of a tag, to cut the portions or the sides of my envelope flaps into little tag corners. And I really love that little extra bit of detail because it makes the pocket in the end look a little bit more interesting. So I'm just cutting off the excess on the upper portion of the envelope booklet, or in this case it's going to be the right side since it is a booklet now. And this is what it looks like when you open it up, and you can kind of see the look of the booklet coming, coming together. The right hand side of the booklet is going to be used for writing space. The left hand side that opens up with the flaps is going to be a pocket and in the middle is going to be a pocket for anything else that I'd like to add. So now I'm taking some tea stained paper and I am just ripping it with my fingers, not cutting it. I like to rip it just to keep up with the rustic and vintage look that the piano paper already has, so I want to enhance the antique look. And so I have some scrap paper that I left and I saved from my previous journal collection and this is going to cover up the right hand side and even though I do hate up covering the beautiful script I have a little bit peeking through on the side and I'm okay with that. So now what I think I want to do 
is make the flaps on the left hand side become closed by a little mechanism that you tend to see in coin envelopes. So I'm just going to layer my piano paper scrap. This is why I do not throw my scraps away because you can always use them for mini embellishments. And add some Mod Podge, flip, add some Mod Podge, and flip again. And so this way you have a very thick piece of paper now. Piano paper, when it's just a single layer, feels just like wax paper. It's very, very thin, which is why it's so fragile. But when you layer it, you can create really thick type of card. So now I'm taking my punch, my little one inch circle punch, and I created some embellishment pieces that I can then put brads through and put some string in order to close the flaps together. So I'm just taking an owl or an awl <laughs> and I just poked my little circle punch and punch it with my owl and then put my brad through and then make sure you open and you close and tighten up the brad and that will secure your paper circle embellishment in place and you can pretty much see where this is going. This is going to allow both of the flaps, the one on the top and the bottom, to be closed by some string that I will wrap behind the um, embellishments. Now you can use whatever string that you have on hand. You can even use embroidery floss, embroidery thread, whatever you have on hand, something so that you can close those two flaps and you can create a pocket or a little tuck-in spot in the middle. I decided to take my tea stain piece of paper and sew it and pass it through my sewing machine to give it more contrast. And here's to show you all of the spaces that you have to tuck things in. You have a full pocket in the back and then you have writing space on the right hand side. I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing all of these projects. There's so many things that you can do with piano paper. All you need is a little bit of patience and creativity. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing all of the projects that we have made using just piano paper rolls. It's a treasure and should be used more in our journals. Please stay tuned for the next video where I show you how to decorate all of the projects that we have made. And until next time, I hope everyone has a wonderful day full of peace and love. Bye bye